Pakistan is struggling to recover from last year's cataclysmic flooding that killed more than 1,700 people. It was the latest in a string of weather-related disasters the country has faced over the past two decades, prompting calls to make hard-hit areas more resilient as they rebuild. Fred de Sam Lazaro reports on one woman's effort across the flood-ravaged Sindh province. This story is produced in partnership with the Pulitzer Center and part of Fred's series, Agents for Change. On a recent morning here in rural Sindh province, workers, including residents of Pono, a model village, were building bamboo frames for construction. The need for durable shelter is overwhelming in a country still grappling with an enormous rebuilding effort. Last year's unrelenting rains wiped away hundreds of thousands of mud huts across rural areas. Standing water still covers acres of land once home to villages of mostly sharecroppers and farm laborers. The village of Pano and 12 others are the brainchild of globally acclaimed architect Yasmin Lari, the first female to qualify as an architect in Pakistan. Unless we find solutions. 82 year old Lari has won several awards in a career that focused at first on designing modern buildings, like the finance and trade center in Pakistan's commercial capital, Karachi. You must know about architects that, you know, we're all trained to control everything. Nothing should be different from what we have decided, what we design. And here was a different way of working altogether. You have to lose your ego. In retirement, she found her calling at the intersection of architecture and social justice, she says, beginning with the devastating 2005 earthquake in Kashmir, where she'd planned to spend three months doing relief work. Well, it didn't quite work out that way, but I found there was plenty to do there. Her focus shifted with the urgent need for structures that can be built quickly and sustainably in a country slammed in recent years by extreme climate events. Moving away from concrete and steel and using more local, low carbon and low cost materials. When I was a practicing architect, I built some huge monster buildings with using a lot of concrete and steel. And I found that 40% of carbon emissions are because of the conventional construction. Among her signature projects is this pedestrian-only street in the heart of Karachi, emphasizing green space and terracotta tile, which drain rainwater much faster than the usual concrete. Concrete is the worst thing, because everything becomes totally impervious. For mass shelter projects, she found a game-changing substitute in lime, an abundant mineral that, mixed with traditional mud, becomes stable and water-resistant, she says. I found it was an absolutely miracle material because it stabilized the earth completely and could last out for years if you submerge it in water, and we've tested that. Laurie's structures incorporate climate-smart design and materials with traditional ones. The key is to build on higher ground, add a short platform for additional protection from floodwaters, and use a sloped, thatched roof. It's made out of eight prefab panels, and then it has an, um, a, a structure, a, a roof which is like an umbrella, so there's a huge amount of air movement. So it's very comfortable inside. My own dream is really that if I could just save people from displacement, if there could be just these structures which will make sure that people can stay in them. About five million Pakistanis remain without permanent shelter. And the goal here is to not just build homes for people, but to train local residents to do it themselves. The hope is that this know-how can then be transferred village to village creating not just sustainable homes, but also jobs. And Lari says she's tried to make sure residents can make something to sell, which has allowed many to emerge from extreme poverty. The reason she credits for this success? I managed to get women mobilized to do things, and I found that I could get the results very quickly. Much of that entrepreneurship is around cleaner cook stoves. <laughs> Champa Kanji learned to build these stoves, or chulas, several years ago. Now she earns a living building them and training others in neighboring villages. My husband joined me and we'd go around to villages and we'd make between eight and ten chulas in a day. We were earning a good wage. Now I hope that it will spread more widely. The stoves range from the simple to very customized, like this demonstrator model in Pono Village. For women like Dani, who uses one name, it's made preparing the family meal far less burdensome. 
The new stoves are very nice. There's less smoke in your face, and it's much safer for the children. Suddenly, women's postures changed because earlier they were crouching on the floor, on the ground, and suddenly every woman's back was erect. Suddenly she was proud, she, as if she was sitting on a throne. And women are in, in the lead in everything that I'm doing. But once they are strong and confident, I think they will make it, they bring about a change. And we've got to bring about a change. We can't go on like this. More immediately, Dhani, husband Kumo, and the 100 other families here say they're grateful their village literally was an island during the recent floods. Because we are higher, we were safe. People in other villages had to run to the roadways because they were lower down. And the water just drained off the roof, away from the house. The water in the old place would come into the house and collapse it. It's not just homes, but also schools that were wiped out in the floods, and Lari hopes to build thousands of them in the years ahead. And she's raising funds to meet the goal of a million homes in the next two years. For the PBS News Hour, this is Fred DeSam Lazaro near Hyderabad, Pakistan. That is remarkable. Who knew that bamboo and lime could make a sturdier home than concrete? I know, and I also love the idea that a simple innovation like those chulas or the stoves can completely transform a family's life, an entire community. Remarkable. Absolutely. Yeah. And we should mention that Fred's reporting is a partnership with the Undertold Stories Project at the University of St. Thomas in Minnesota. And stay with us. Coming up, dozens of Texas prisoners go on a hunger strike to protest solitary confinement. And a New England guitar maker uses unique material to decrease her environmental impact.